I use my paper scanner to scan the edge of a Hot Wheels track so I can turn it into a 3D print. I'll explain it all on today's Film at Friday. This video is brought to you by Microswiss. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know I've been playing with Hot Wheels track, trying to make something bigger for my grandson. And I want to make it more permanent with a wood structure and then finish it off with model train accessories. Something similar to what 3D Bot Maker does for their die cast racing. A lot of people who build these buy these crash circuit kits from Walmart or Amazon and they use the pieces to build their track. And the kit includes some of these straight sections, but I need a lot of them. These straight sections are actually very flexible. They've got slots underneath them to lock into other track pieces, like the curves like this, and it works really well. But when you lock the two together with the locking clips that they give you, it doesn't hold very tight. And when you put it on an angle for like downhill racing, they want to pull apart. So I'm not happy with this, but you can actually buy 3D printed clips for these guys but I can't find anywhere where I can buy just the straightaways. And I don't want to keep buying crash circuit kits just to get more of them. I've used a paper scanner before to make 3D prints. And I thought, why couldn't I scan the edge of this track and reproduce it? And this was the result, but very sketchy. So I brought it into a graphics editor. I used the scan as a guide, thickened up the walls, and then I exported it as a .svg file, brought it into Tinkercad, and I could clean it up further and also resized things and added bumps like this on top like the original track had. Then I needed to resize this, reshape to get it to the right dimensions and then I could extrude it to make a track section and it came out pretty good. Now as I mentioned the original track is very flexible so I thought I'd start with Ninja Flex. This is a very flexible filament and print this and see how good a flexible section of track would work. So I printed that on my A1 Mini and it came out pretty good. Some stringing definitely, but it's far more flexible than the original track. But because of that, it fit onto the curve very nicely. But now I wanted bigger sections and stiffer sections. So I brought it into Orca Slicer and I made it much taller, 290 millimeters and printed it straight up. And I did this on my K1 Max. And it did a really good job. This is just standard PLA, but about halfway up it fell over. It broke away from the brim. So then I thought, what if I turned it 45 degrees? That way it's equally X and Y direction. Would that make a difference? So I sliced it again and printed it. And this time it came out really good. The very top of it was wiggling a little bit, but it stayed in place. And I actually printed a couple of these. Now it's very stringy. This is some old PLA, but that's not a problem because this will just blow off with a heat gun. I'll just run a heat gun across it like this and get rid of the stringing and this is how it works. It just disappears. I mean, it can't get it all, but it does a pretty good job. Now, this is a shorter piece that fell over, and it was really stringy. I need to hit this again with the heat gun. But the top surface looks really good. The longer sections looked really good until you got to about 280 millimeters. And then you could see a little bit of wave in it, like this thing was wiggling at the top. And this other one was actually worse because you can see on the right side, there's some roughness. So 290 may be too tall. I may have to go to 250, but it did print it without falling over. And these are still, even though they're PLA, they're still a bit flexible. And I think this may work for long sections of the straightaway. Now, I did also try printing it flat with supports. I went with automatic supports, which are probably a mistake, but I couldn't get the supports off. It was a nightmare, and I actually broke one of the tracks. So I'm sticking with the stand-up method. But the real question is, did I get my dimensions right, and how well do these lock together? How well do they hold? There's a few things I can adjust, but overall, it fit together nice and tight, and it doesn't sag when I put it at an angle. And it still connects to the original track, so I got that to line up pretty well. Where it doesn't work is on the curves. It's too stiff to connect to the little tabs that are coming out. So for that, I'm going to have to go with a different method. And that's when it occurred to me I could use that Ninja Flex section to make the transition. And that actually worked really well. Or I could just use the original track. And then further down, I could connect in my PLA track to it. So that'll work. So I think I've got success here. And I'm not going to have to buy a bunch of track kits just to get these straightaways. And I can make modifications, diff print of different colors, whatever I want. So the next step is to build a structure. I just found this online as a picture. Build a structure that can actually support the tracks so then I can build my own raceway. 
I've already got an electronic starting gate like I showed in a previous video. So I just need to work on this and try to emulate what 3D Bot Maker did. This is just such a great track. Now I've actually got a couple of these K1 Max, so I should be able to print these pretty quick. But I want better flow, and that's where the MicroSwiss Flowtech Hot End could come in. They've recently released a new nozzle for it. I showed you how to install this in a previous video, showed you step-by-step -step installation, although their guide is actually really good. But they have replaceable nozzles. Well, now they have a CHT nozzle. That's the one that's high flow. It's got three different channels before it gets to the end of the nozzle. You can get it in 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, or even a one millimeter nozzle. So check it out. Check out MicroSwiss's Flowtech CHT high flow nozzles today. So I'm still working on some improvements to this design, so I'm not sharing anything yet. And I want to try other filaments. Some flexible filaments that maybe aren't quite as flexible as NinjaFlex, but not as stiff as PLA. And maybe I can get to a track that works a little better or closer to the original. And I couldn't do any of this without the support of my Patreon supporters. They're there with me every week, and I thank you so much for helping make this channel possible. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or a membership at Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hollabuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.